So Ireland is a lovely little island. Uh, it's surrounded by wonderful water bodies. Uh, we have the Atlantic Ocean there and the Irish Sea and the whole lot going on, and it's great. And they were relatively um, underexplored before the arrival of Little and Aldi and cheap uh, wetsuits, because you can't really go to the beach in Ireland without a wetsuit. We think we can, and we think, Irish families still think they're convinced that you can go to the beach in Ireland and have a great day. No, you can't. You go to the beach, right, and you have a, 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 a miserable first, you know, especially those, those, you know, you put on your, your shorts and your, your togs and you're ready to get into the water, like, yay! And you run to the beach and you're convinced, like, you're like David Hasselhoff and this is Baywatch, and then splash, whoo, genie! And then in you get to the water and it's Baltic, so you have to swim with fists, because if you extend your fingers, they will go so blue, so blue and then white, and then you feel nothing. And then you're like, you're swimming in the water, going, this, I, love, I love the beach, this is the best, best thing ever, and then you come out and you get an ice cream, which is the best idea ever. When you can't feel your hands, it's leaking down your hands, you're like, I can't feel my tongue, I can't feel my hands. Um, so we, we, yeah, we're, we always think, we, we, get, we do get excited about going to the beach, and I have no idea why, then you have sand stuck everywhere. Okay, but that's really, I'm, I digress. Um, when, when, when we're running into the water, that's the point I wanted to make. We know there's going to be that initial shock, okay? Uh, Again, wetsuits make this process a whole lot easier. But there's, you know, that you're, you're anticipating the cold. You know, um, we went to the beach there a while ago, and so some of the uh, young people here, they were um, walking kind of delicately, intensively into the water, and I came along. I was wearing runners, so I could walk a lot faster in the water. And when they saw me coming, they knew I was going to splash them because I'm a big child. And indeed, I didn't. They were bracing themselves for the cold, which invariably came very quickly. Uh, so, yeah, you're bracing yourself, okay? Or, I, like, I have the greatest respect for, for, for lads who play rugby or kind of maybe more uh, contact sports where it is inevitable that you're going to get your face planted into the, into the ground. It's going to happen. In fact, invariably, if, if you're carrying the ball, generally you will carry it until you get taken down. That's you, you, keep, you keep running and, you know, you have the, the one hand out ready to defend yourself and you're horsing it, like, running for the line and then as soon as a big guy is coming towards you, how many more steps will I get before... Right, and so you're going to get smashed every time you carry the ball, more or less. But you do it anyway. Why do we do these things? <laughs> Why do we expose ourselves to to cold or to physical almost annihilation? Uh, why why do we do these things? I love this line. This is one of my my favorite lines from Scripture, John sixteen thirty three. But the Lord says, in this world, you will have trouble. He doesn't say you might have trouble. He doesn't say trouble might come your way. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. And then there are different translations for the next line. It says, but be brave. Some say, but be courageous. I prefer courageous. But be courageous, for I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have trouble. But be courageous, for I have overcome the world. So in, in the world, we're, 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 going, we're, kind of, we're bracing ourselves for these, for these impacts because they're, they're going to come. You know, like, it's going to happen. Things are going to get tough. Like people who we know are going to die. You know, you, our parents will pass away before us. Chances are. It's sad, but it's, it's true. Your, your friends, uh, my, my grand-aunt lived to be 100 and it was just, you know, you'd imagine, you know, live long and prosper as the, they stay in Star Trek, what was that race called, Spock, whatever he was called. Um, it, it's something we wish ourselves, you know, a long life. But she'd lived so long that everybody she knew was dead. Her, obviously, obviously parents, brothers, sisters, even some of, of the generation after her had passed away. Everyone was gone. And there was just a whole new world with all new people who I don't know. So, I mean, these, we're not all, I don't want to be too negative. I'm, I'm, the point I'm making here is that, is that crosses will come our way. You know, that there will be trouble. Not everything is going to be plain sailing. It, it, it was, and the Lord never promised that would be the case. You want to be a follower of mine. Renounce yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. He never said, he just never said it was going to be easy. Follow me and it'll be so easy. I'll take care of everything. Follow me and there will be no trouble. It just, that's not in scripture. 
It's not there. So how, how, do, we, how, do, we, how do we balance this, this reality of the, the, the calling that we have to be joyful? Uh, on, on Saturday, we heard, if I can skip back to it quickly, you might not, there's a couple of year A's, year B's, seventh, sixth week, Saturday, and here we go. So, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and so your joy will be complete. Your joy will be, you, you'll have, you will have complete joy. This is John 16, 23, and today is John 16, a continuation of that, uh, 29 to 33. So he's talking about joy, and at the same time, this fact that trouble is going to come our way. How can you do that? How can you, how can you have both? How can you have joy and the cross? How can you have joy in suffering? How? The only way, the only way is through love. When the cross that comes our way, when we can offer that, unite that to the Lord in love, it is love that makes us joyful. And it's very important that we as Christians, if, if we're, we, when we carry that love in our hearts, that we let our faces know that we're joyful. This is important. All right? It's important that, we, that our faces are aware of the fact that we're joyful. So, so the Lord, he makes this, it's, a, it's kind of, a, it's an awful re reality and truth to reveal to his apostles. The time will come, in fact it's coming already, when you will be scattered, each going his own way, and you will leave me alone. You will leave me alone. But I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. I've told you this, why? So that you may find peace in me. So where do we find peace? In the Lord. In the Lord. Who, he, he's, he's telling them, you will find peace in me, even though I have just told you, you will walk away from me. But you will, you will still, even despite that, I, 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 I will not abandon you. I will not leave you orphan. You will still find peace in me. Trouble will come your way. But be courageous. Because I've overcome the world. I've, come, I've overcome all of these sources of trouble, whatever they may be in your life. Whether it's family, or whether it's within yourself, whether it's your own inabilities and failure and brokenness, or whether it's things that have happened to you, whatever these things are, the Lord has overcome it all. And how? Through love. Everything is transformed. All of the, 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 the evil, all of the, the sin even, even the, uh, the, the, our failures, everything is taken upon the Lord and transformed by love. And we're called to do the same thing as followers of Jesus, to transform everything in our lives into love. So the, the cross is transformed into glory through love. That's what Jesus does. It's what we're called to do. And then this gives us great, it gives us great peace. It gives us a peace that the, that the world cannot give. It gives us a joy that the world cannot give. Because if it's all rooted in the Lord, then nothing, nothing else really matters. And that's, that's a beautiful realization, like a beautiful way to live. In the world you will have trouble, but be brave. brave. Or if we use the other translation, be courageous. Courageous. Cor ajo the heart to act. You know, so in this world you'll have trouble, but we're not called to oh, just kind of fall back and be passive and say, well, sure, hit me if you must. <laughs> you know, we still, we're still, we still have to have the heart to act. So in the world we're going to have trouble, so what are you going to do? Sit down and just be a, floor, a doormat? You know, are we, are we, <laughs> are we just going to, or what? Like, are we, going to, are we going to fight back? And if we're going to fight back, how do you fight back? In this world, we're going to have trouble, so what are we going to do? We're called to still act. And this action that we, that we, that we, must, we must do is, is, is to remain united to the Lord. He's the vine, we're the branches. And we remain united to him through prayer. So in the world, we're going to have trouble. We must remain united to the Lord, who is the source of our peace, source of our joy. We do so through prayer. And then we too will experience this same victory of the Lord in our lives. He has overcome the world. He's overcome Satan, darkness, sin, and death. 
Do you want a bit of that in your life? Do you want, do you want to see that victory realized in your life? I love that there's a song that um, we used to sing a couple of years ago in youth groups, and it's, you know, show your power, Lord. Uh, it's a bit cheesy, but I, I like that expression, though. You know, to actually to, 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 to say to the Lord within yourself, Lord, show your power in my life. Show your power in this, in this problem, in this difficulty. In my weakness, loneliness, uh, failure, Lord, show your power. Show that you're God. Show that you've overcome the world. You don't have to prove anything to me. It's not, it's not, it's not for that. But, it's, but I believe that you're God, and I know that you can do this. Show that you're God in my life. Dear brothers and sisters, in the world we're going to have trouble, and my guess is you've already experienced that. So let's root ourselves in the Lord, the source, the source of our joy. And let us be consoled by the Lord's promise, by this truth, that no matter what the world can throw at us, the Lord has already overcome it. Amen.